I'm Daniel. I'm Jay-Z. And this is Just My DIY. When we first started making wood signs, we quickly discovered that paint was going to be the cheapest way to get designs on them. But it's not necessarily the easiest or the cleanest. And it's not easy or clean because the paint tends to seep under the tape or the stencils and creates a mess. So we developed some techniques to help us whether or not we're using stencils or painter's tape. Mm -hmm. And we're going to show those to you in this video. The first project will focus on getting a clean line with painter's tape. The second, a full design with stencil. So let's brush up on some painting techniques. <laughs> we're going to start by creating a straight line with painter's tape. First step is when you have any of your raw wood, we're going to sand it. And you're gonna probably sand it two times at this rate. We're gonna two different varying grits. We end up with a, a, a 240 grit for our last sanding. But of course, we also need to work on the edges. Once it is sanded and we have the sanding dust wiped off, we're gonna go ahead and stain it. Of course, stir, don't shake your stain. But the most important thing for the painting technique is to let your stain fully cure. So we did this the night before and probably gave it about 14 hours or so before we were ready to do the paint. Once so, it was dried, we decided this is where we want our straight line to be. The thinner section of two of the planks that make up this round. We're gonna pull out the frog tape and we're going to dictate that straight line and work it into place. The frog tape is really important. It has such a good adhesion to it. So we're going to um, link that down below so make sure you get the right tape. We cover up the rest of it just for posterity and cleanliness sakes and pull out the Mod Podge. This Mod Podge is the tip of all tips for getting the straight line with your paint. We're going to work it in side to side or from the painter's tape down onto the exposed wood, but we are absolutely 100% going to avoid upstrokes. Once we have that line down around the tape, we're going to finish painting the rest of it with this Mod Podge just for a nice smooth surface. And of course, make sure you get any drips. We give it only about 15 minutes to tack up, but we do not want it to dry. At this point in time, we pull out our preferred chalk of choice. Chalk paint. <laughs> <laughs> And we go ahead and distribute it into a small painter's tray. And with the same rule set, we're gonna distribute it side to side and from the frog tape down onto the now being painted wood, but never up. Right, you don't want to push anything into or underneath that tape, so just make sure you're being gentle. But keeping in mind, we're not going to let this paint dry and then do a second coat. So we are getting as much paint down as we can to ensure that it has the level of opaqueness we're looking for, all in one coat. So we can get everything that we want painted on it painted, and the edges included this time around. And like she said, before we let it dry, in fact, immediately when we're done painting it, while it's absolutely wet, we peel the frog tape. That's right. That way there's no paint that gets stuck to the tape and then tries to pull up when you pull your tape up. You've probably had that happen before. That's why we pull it wet. We just make sure there's no paint on your gloves at any point as you're touching this wood. <laughs> But as you can see, that is a beautiful, straight, perfect line. And of course, we finish a project with it. We're not here to show you the rest of the project. Yes, that was from our engagement video, and we will link you over to that video if you want to see how the full thing was done. We're going to move on to painting stencils. First, we're going to start with this finished round from Michaels, and we cut out a design on the Cricut using Cricut Removable vinyl. That's very important because it has enough stick to give us good adhesion but not too much to pull up the white white washing that's already on this round. So you do see that we put some transfer tape on the front of it and begin to peel the backing once we have it aligned in place. This technique we use here about cutting away a little bit of it so it's tacked for our straight line as we work its sheet off of the back. That's just a little trick we always use when we put down vinyl. The important thing here is this felt tip squeegee that we have that's allowing us to get a good adhesion onto this round. 
Once we feel like we have it down well enough, we use the 180 degree <laughs> fold on the transfer tape to peel it off so everything stays in place. And nothing tries to lift. Pull out the Mod Podge. So again, our secrets are a good adhesion with the right material and then adding the Mod Podge on top. But with a stencil, you can't just go in one direction. You do end up going a little against it in some spots. That's just the way letters work. So we're trying to not be super rough with it. These are lighter strokes, shorter strokes, and we are going to go over the entire thing. And that's one of the reasons why we wanted the, the removable vinyl to be so well planted. Absolutely. So again, we only let it sit 15 minutes. We don't let it fully dry before we grab our craft paint. We are trying to at least stick with one direction on these. You'll see with the it's, we came across it. With the Mary, we're coming down. We're just not going, you know, everywhere with the paint. You're getting all crazy up in here. Nah, not trying to get crazy. <laughs> crazy. Trying to get Mary up in here. <laughs> Mary, yeah. <laughs> So this, we let it dry for probably about five minutes, but again, we are pulling it mostly wet. You just have to be really careful because the stencil can drop back down on your design. But again, just pulling it wet ensures that nothing tries to lift that shouldn't lift. And of course we have three R's and an A to weed before it's finished. But look at how clean those lines are. We hope this video helped you learn how to stop the paint from bleeding, whether you're using a stencil or painter's tape. And if it did, you should give a like, subscribe, ring the bell. If you have any painting techniques you'd like to share, feel free to write it out in the comment line. And of course, everything that we use to do this is listed out in the description. Also in the description are links to all of our social handles. Please connect with us across platforms. We love hearing from you. And don't forget to check out our blog at JustMyDIY.com. Thanks for watching.